Social Security and National Insurance Trust, has mounted a strong defense of his stewardship at the trust, describing the charge of causing financial loss to the state brought against him as persecution and victimization. The former Director General of the SNAIT has been accused of causing financial loss to the state and has accordingly been charged by anti-graft agency Yoko. At a press conference in Accra on Wednesday, SNAIT company secretary Gutiannan said a contract signed for the provision of a operation business suite OBS at a cost of 34 million in 2012 had ballooned to 68 million dollars. But a statement released on behalf of Mr. Thompson by solicitors uh, Bakwam Pim Chambers said the usual mantra of the management led by the Director General has been the spurious allegation intended to deceive the public. The statement signed by his lead counsel, A. Tetemensa, said, It is thus obvious and crystal clear that the state management has decided to do politics, and in the process, it has adopted as its weapons persecution and victimization of our client and ignored the truth, evidence, and facts surrounding the OBS project. Explaining why the jump in contract sum, the statement noted that in the original scoping for the contract requirement, that puts the contract sum at $34 million, uh, dollars, provision was made for only 400,000 cards. Meanwhile, Senate has a contributor population of over 3 million. It added that the scoping provided for only five kiosks, the machines that look like ATM machines of the banks. Whereas Senate has about 54 branch offices throughout the country, and each needed to be provided with a kiosk to enable the contributors to access any information required. From the above, therefore, the purchases for additional cards of over 2 million and 50 kiosks in furtherance of the effective management of the project will justifiably be in the right direction, which will lead to contract price escalation automatically. On the alleged price, Waterhouse Coppers audit report of the OBS claiming to indict our client, Mr. Thompson solicitor said, our client is unaware of any investigation or audit undertaken by Price Waterhouse Coopers. We say this on authority because it will seem strange to us that in an audit, that an audit could be conducted over a period of several months and a report released without any hearing given to our client by PwC to state his side of the case. The solicitor said they have taken note that at the end of the PwC supposed report, one of the major recommendations on the OBS was that SNE should further investigate the issues identified in the report and seek legal advice. Assessing the OBS saga, the statement observed that there was an orchestrated project by the management of SNE and some selected media houses aimed at whipping up negative public sentiments against Mr. Thompson, but at the appropriate time, they, the solicitors, shall take the necessary steps to defend the hard-earned reputation of Mr. Thompson, which has been deliberately damaged. It assured that they will fully cooperate with any state institution handling the matter, though it insisted that our client, whilst in office, did not criminally misconduct himself. Now, the, 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 the SNIT called a press conference, and they were supposed to it was supposed to be the formal handing over of uh, uh, a report by PwC to them. But interestingly, the board chairman then brought in an issue of Ioko, which was not part of the, the, the PwC thing. And I, when I heard it at first, I found it strange because Ioko can only recommend to the Attorney General. So for the SNIT board chairman and other people to sit there and talk about charges being preferred. I found that, uh, uh, to put it mildly, uh, okay, let me say disingenuous for, for out of respect uh, for, for whoever said that. You know, I, I found it a bit. So I wasn't surprised when the Attorney General now had to come and clarify issues and virtually contradict what uh, SNIT has said. And I wasn't also surprised that Mr. Thompson, who has remained quiet in all of these allegations, for the first time had to let his lawyers issue a press release. But Randy, um, it was absolutely necessary that Mr. Thompson speaks to the matter. Because we have gotten to a point where it had become obvious that the new management of SNET was out there to damage his reputation and put out information in a manner that seeks to impute wrongdoing to him. Every human being reserves the right to correct falsehood that is put out about him. And like you said, uh, Dr. Adokufo is a highly respected member of Ghanaian society, a distinguished medical practitioner who has been Minister of State and, and basically acquitted himself creditably. He is also not known 
to double in this kind of political. So it was, it was very surprising that he of all persons would be the one to put out this sort of information which has turned out to be inaccurate uh, regarding whether or not charges have been preferred against uh, Mr. Thompson and any other persons or whether or not they had been even arrested or detained by Yoko because part of the reportage said that two days ago Mr. Thompson and three other persons were arrested by Yoko creating the impression that they were under some form of uh, detention or some form of judicial process. Meanwhile, that, that was not the case. Now, if you read the statement carefully, it, 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 it is quite obvious that this government is, is hell-bent on using a supposed fight against corruption to cover up for what is clearly very, very poor performance on the governance front. Because it is not only SNET that has been in, engaged in this sort of conduct. You remember that last week, Maslok was engaged in a similar conduct. At a time when the government was under heavy criticism for multiple scandals, the disgraceful uh, corruption scandals that emerged out of the Commonwealth, game, Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia, where government officials have clearly been found to have been engaged in visa racketeering was a case in point. The government came under a lot of criticism. Then, later in the week, this MMT corruption scandal also came to the fore. And I don't know whether you've heard any of the tape recordings that the, the reporter referred to. I heard one yesterday. I was quite frankly shocked. Where really? a procurement official was heard saying that they had been instructed to award the contract to a particular company at a time when the procurement process had not been concluded. Indeed, that official was directing the company in question on how to fill forms in order to gain advantage. Really? Over the, yes. I heard it on Star FM yesterday. So there is massive rot, corruption, under the watch of the Akufuado government at MMT. And government is fully aware that this is something that would detract from their propaganda of anti-corruption and what have you. So quickly, let us lobby in this next matter. Indeed, when I read the statement, I think it was, they stated in there that this so-called PricewaterhouseCoopers report was concluded six months ago. So why did it become suddenly urgent to hold an event to present a report formally so that the board chairman will have opportunity to make statements that seek to denigrate Mr. Thompson and impute wrongdoing to him without furnishing any conclusive evidence. Again, the rules of natural justice are clearly breached in this process. How is it that PricewaterhouseCoopers, which is supposed to be a reputable audit firm, carries out an audit into the tenor of some individuals and does not give them a hearing? So their input is not factored into the report. How can such a report stand any form of judicial scrutiny? It will be shut down one time because the precedence is that you must give everybody you accuse a hearing. And if you look at the way that this next story has been put out early, it is obvious from the start what it was intended to achieve. You recall that even the station that first broke the story later came back to say that they had actually found that the claims that the business operation suite or operational business suite, whatever they call it, was not working. And that they had found evidence that it was actually working and functioning. Mm. Again, they speak about cost escalation or cost variations. Randy, the Flagstaff House, which is not too far from where we sit, when they started, we were told that it would cost $30 million. Then it jumped to $60 million. Then it went to $100 million. You recall that there was a time that the then chief of staff went to parliament and said that he was no longer going to put a cost to it because anybody who has put up a building would know that cost variations are not surprising in any project that you undertake. It will not be the first time that a project will be varied in terms of cost. And as the statement rightly noted, if you initially project to buy 400,000 cats and five kiosks and purchase some software to operate it. The cost will certainly be lower than when you go and buy an additional 2.6 million cats and buy an additional 50 kiosks. It is common sense. It is logic. So how can such a variation form the basis of accusations of wrongdoing? You see, the MPP government must get something straight. When the people of Ghana queued to vote for them. They did so with the mindset 
that they will perform and deliver on the promises that they made to the ele electorate of Ghana. Nothing short of that will guarantee them longevity in government. So when they come to power and they think that all that they need to do instead of performing is to level allegations of corruption against past NDC officials so that when we get to the elections, they will cite that as reason to be retained. They are grossly mistaken. Only this week, a, a rapporteur from the UN has exposed the hollowness of their sloganeering and dismissed their claims about uh, Ghana beyond aid, one district, one factory, one village, one dam, as nothing more than empty rhetoric. The very same thing that we in opposition cautioned against has become the subject of criticism by a neutral arbiter. So they are not performing. Hardships are escalating. And in the space of two weeks, fuel prices have been increased twice. And Ghanaians are feeling the pinch. The duty payments at the ports have not reduced. The taxes that businessmen pay haven't gone down. Indeed, as we speak, they are threatening to bring more tax measures to Parliament in the media review. Ghanaians continue to smart under excruciating hardship. And then on top of that, they are fantastically corrupt too. As I've indicated to you through the Metro Mass corruption scandal, the Visa racketeering scandal, and I'm sure you followed reports about some, uh, what do you call it, uh, nepotism and cronyism in the issuance of bonds, where a company belonging to the person who is supposed to issue the bonds on behalf of the government of Ghana has been selected to serve as transaction advisor so that the profit that the company will make will, be, will benefit the very person spearheading the transaction. We were here when the cash for seed scandal broke out. And all the corruption allegations that they are immersed in. And yet they think that leveling falsehoods against past officials is what will get them out of the woods. I'm afraid they are grossly mistaken. And Mr. Thompson and all other NDC officials who have been accused have indicated their preparedness to fight to the death on the various issues to use every means available to them to ensure that no witch hunt takes place, or even if such a witch hunt takes place, it does not succeed. So the government will be well advised to focus on their mandate and deliver it. No amount of propaganda, no amount of diversion, no amount of fabrications about corruption is going to get them out of the woods. When the people of Ghana come to make a decision on who should govern them, the MPP will not be saved by how many cor uh, corruption allegations they made against past NDC officials. And Ghanaians, I'm sure, have also taken notes of the very highly irregular way that they are doing this. You recall when Dr. Opuni was initially dismissed. You recall how officials of Kokobot actually went out and claimed that in collusion with President Mama, he had withdrawn $400 million from the account of Kokobot. I'm sure you remember that allegation. Where is that allegation in the scheme of things as we speak? It was an obvious falsehood that they were throwing out, and they knew that it was false. And yet they threw it out with a view to bastardizing the man and making him look like a demon himself so that they will carry some advantage with the electorate. When you behave that way, you are bound to fail. Look, Randy. Between 2001 and 2008, they tried similar tricks. Indeed, they actually took people to jail. Most of the people insist that they were innocent. It did not save them when the people of Ghana made up their minds that they needed to be booted out. I thought that they would draw lessons from that and move away from this very, 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 if you like, mundane behavior of simply level allegations against your predecessor. You find instances where people who are uh, uh, what were appointed into office in various government agencies who you expect to have their eyes on the ball and move to transform the fortunes of the organizations, become people who persecute their predecessors. And all they do is to level allegations against their predecessors. The same thing happened at Maslow. I've indicated that. Mm. And they are the ones who stand on platforms and pronounce on whether or not people will be prosecuted. Last week, the Maslow CEO, my friend Stika, was on air prejudicing any possible judicial process by saying that people will soon be hauled before court. How does he come to that conclusion? Is he the one who makes the decisions on who goes to court? The highly respected Dr. Adokufo, is it, does it fall under his purview 
to determine who is prosecuted or not when no such process has even begun. So where did that come from? And why do they feel that any time they are hot? And okay. Uh, since this allegation started last year, got his lawyers to issue a statement. And then the Attorney General, who also seldomly speaks, has done about three or four radio interviews. I mean, uh, uh, first of all, uh, 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 disputing what the Snake Board Chairman has said and clarifying what the issues are and, and, and where, at which stage they are with respect to the Yoko issues. And Mr. Thompson believes that what Snate is engaged in is an act intended to persecute and victimize him. And then interestingly, it turns out that even the audit, the auditors did not speak with the person's consent. They didn't speak with him. And we are told that this audit cost as much as half a million dollars. Honorable well, Minister. Well, good morning to you and to your viewers and to my friend. Mm, I hello. see he's had quite some time ranting and running riot. Mm. Um, but, um, Randy, yep. the truth of the matter is that everybody agrees across Africa that the greater part of our being is the mismanagement of the resources of the African people. And this is irrespective of country. Everybody agrees that per the resources that Africa is imbued with, if we had honest governance across the African landscape and people were managing our resources honestly and judiciously and applying them to the things that they were supposed to be applied to, Africa will not be where it is. So if a government comes into place and inherits an economy that virtually is on its knees, and if it audits the books, and mind you, these issues about corruption and monies that were allegedly misappropriated by various organizations across our governmental landscape were issues that were in the fore even in 2016 when the NDC was in power. The Senate software issues and JIDA and SUBA and Woyomi, all of those things, even Cocoa Board issues were already in the public space cocoa roads that were allegedly awarded that are not being done and all of those things were already in the public space so quite frankly if the senate chairman held a press conference and said anything i didn't hear him say anything that i didn't know before especially with regards to snake these matters have been in the public space since last year so randy i disagree that it wasn't in the proper place for him to have, if you want, highlighted the issues of the misapplication of SNET funds for projects that were basically, if you want, irrelevant to the organizational aims how, 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 and objectives. How is the OBS irrelevant? If you did, um, what do you call software for what, 80 million US, US dollars. It's not I mean, software. That's it's not software. What is it? It's, it's an OBS. And, um, <laughs> that does what? Well, it does a lot of things. And <laughs> even, at the, even at the press conference, yes. the director general yes. alluded to they taking about 8,000 ghost names mm -hmm. off uh, the SNET system. Mm -hmm. And it's through this OBS. And that, that saves the government about, what did it, which figure they put out, 35 million or so. Um, mm -hmm. every month uh -huh. and it is through the same OBS system Randy what you say the Senate Director General has put in place yes you are quick Randy yes. to believe it and to say that it saved what no, I'm saying he said 
I'm not yeah, saying. Yeah, but you believe it. You are, you are, you are, you are, I am just you telling you that he said this. Hold yes, it. Yes. Hold it. Hold it. Yeah. I am making a point to you mm -hmm. that whatever mechanism or, if you want, uh, engineering product mm -hmm. that cost 80 million CDs. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, 80 million United States dollars. 68 million. 80 million has been put in the public space. We've had 70 million. We've had whatever. <laughs> now, you say even 68 million. Let yeah. me agree with you that it's 68 million. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much, how, what, what infrastructure pe development people are doing around Africa and across the world with 68 million cities? Mm -hmm. How do you invest 68 million cities in a project that helps you to, to, to get rid of ghost names? There well, are not controller not just, and accountant not just general that. And, and other uh, not, Ministry not of Finance that. over the years have been getting rid of go ghost names mm. with, <laughs> without um, having to spend even 5 million United States dollars. You mm. don't need 68 million United States dollars to be able to get rid of go ghost names. But that's not, so the, whether that's or not, not the intent. That's not the only thing that, that But that's the point you are making. No. You just made the point, no. Randy, no. that no. that no. thing no. No. got rid of <coughs> ghost names. No. No. And no. therefore, those ghost names no. would have cost the taxpayer no. 35 no. million Chief. United States Chief. dollars. I guess I guess that you're mixing up the issues. I'm not mixing you up. You were saying that it was unnecessary. It was useless. But Sneed of course didn't it need was. it. That's what you're saying. Yes. That Sneed didn't they need They didn't it. need that particular application to do the things that you are purporting that those applications do. I am not there purporting. Are, there are various applications yes. that are doing much better than what you are like saying what? is being like done. Like which application? Like every time we've been getting rid of ghost names in our country. Randy. But the and objective we was not to, has the objective was million so your your point is that you disagree. You disagree with Snead going to spend that money. Absolutely. But that's not what is an issue. What is an issue? What is an issue you are is, saying that is that why did the chairman of Snead put that out? And of course he's chairman of Snead. Yes. And if he's presiding over a system yeah. which he has inherited, which is inherently rotting, he should put out that rot. Okay. Honorable Minister, maybe you weren't listening. Y yes. Because you probably were late. <laughs> What I have said here. I was listening. When I came in, okay. Felix was, as I said, running riot on subjects from archaeology just to zoology. Was he speaking just to the class of the matter? Have you heard your attorney to? general on this matter? Have you heard your attorney general? Did you listen to your attorney general yesterday? Hold it. Hold it. Yes. The issues that you are making yes. are correct. That if somebody says that Yoko has charged somebody, but you are dwelling on technicality. Yoko has oh. the capacity to investigate people. Yoko has the capacity to determine that there are issues that are answerable in a court of law and to forward same to the office of attorney general uh -huh. for the processes to be triggered for the, for the prosecution of those people. Now so just, if the chairman of the says... You, did you hear your attorney press. general yesterday? I didn't hear her. You didn't hear her? Yes. Okay. Okay. If you didn't hear her, then... then, then no, because... Then but you've it. said yes. what she said. You say that she says that Yoko does not have the capacity to... And I'm saying that, but that's no news. She didn't say that. I what didn't did say she, she say? said that. What did she say? What she said was that... Yes. Ioko only recommends. Ioko has sent a recommendation to them. Exactly. It's up to them. Yes. As the attorneys. Yes. To determine... Yes. Whether indeed this thing is prosecutable or not. But that's... They are not... Knowledge. They are not at that stage. They have not made a determination. Yes. The Snead Board Chairman says that... Yes. Ioko mm -hmm. has charged these four persons with causing financial loss. In fact, that they had been arrested on that Wednesday. And then it turns out that uh -huh. the last time that somebody like Ernest Thompson even had an interaction with Yoko was in October last year. Yes. Randy, so I'm saying to you mm. that the point that you are making, mm -hmm. okay, does not take away, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. from the fact that a Senate chairman mm -hmm. is, is within the purview and right and if you want responsibility mm -hmm. of the chairman of any corporation or board mm -hmm. to put out findings about the corporation in regard to matters about which he has inherited. Mm -hmm. I have said that to you, mm -hmm. and you agree that that is correct. Mm -hmm. Now, he commits, if you want, um, a legal error if he says that uh, Yoko has charged, when indeed Yoko has not charged. But even if I... if if I heard that language right, mm -hmm. I understood it to mean that if Yoko has made a certain determination mm -hmm. of, if you want, some wrongdoing, mm -hmm. 
which would soon be unveiled before the court. Are you happy? What is wrong? Are you happy? Yes. That an organization spends half a million on an audit. Yes. And sits, addresses a press conference mm -hmm. and speaks about that particular audit. Yes. When that same audit says that the people mm -hmm. about whom that particular part of the audit has been made were never spoken to. And, and you're happy to have paid such monies to that institution and you're happy to address the nation and to put information out and to be, be happy to even say that, yes, they've done it. These are their findings. They didn't speak to them. They have recommended that you go and take further steps. Is that a way to go, Honorable Minister? Randy, it is wrong for auditors to compile a final audit report without recourse to the people about whom the audit was triggered in the first place. That is not in dispute. Mm -hmm. I, I, are you following me? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying also to you that, therefore, that may be wrong from the audit point of view. Mm -hmm. But that is not the point at issue. Why? The point at issue, mm -hmm. which you confronted me with, mm -hmm. was the Snake Board Chairman holding a press conference Yes. to say that Iyoko had charged people when indeed Iyoko does not have the capacity to charge. And I said to you that, yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. But it is also the responsibility of a snake board chairman to put out matters. Like he, he talked about Sticker, he talked about all the heads of organization mm -hmm. who are putting out information, okay, about the rot that they are supposed to have inherited or that they allege that they inherited. And I'm saying that it is within their right to do so. You are disputing that they shouldn't be saying so because those matters have, been, have not been proven in a court of law. Because I heard him. That's what he's saying. So he, the, those he conclusions. Yes. Yes. Yes, have not been, yes. if you want, unveiled before a court yes. of law. Yes. And have not been determined to be, to be true. Yes. I, I follow yes. you. Yes, and I agree with that. But mm -hmm. I am saying that merely putting it out, it's not prejudicial as he's alleging, that either the Snake Board Chairman is engaged in prejudicial um, matters, and Stika and the rest of them are all engaged in matters that are prejudicial, even if you want, to the rights of certain people who are involved. And I, and I disagree with you. Doc, that's, that's the point. Doc, you yes. have a lot of agencies under your ministry, yes. including your ministry itself. Yes. If you contracted an audit firm yes. to do an audit for you, yes. and you pay top dollar for that audit, yes. and you receive the report, and you realize that on a particular issue, which then becomes your top issue out of that whole audit, the 400 pages or so. And you realize that the auditors didn't speak with any of the people involved. Because, you see, immediately the board chairman decides to bring in the Iyoko angle on that same subject. What he seeks to do is to say that, look, we have two separate institutions that have come to the same conclusion. And in fact, this is what is going to happen to the people involved. Yet that same audit report that you are holding did not speak with any of the people involved. Yet you've paid top dollar for it. Yet you hold a press conference and you put this out in the public domain and you believe that is a good job. You are saying that that report was a 400 page <coughs> report. That's what we're told, yes. Absolutely. There is no way that anybody can hold a press conference in our country. Mm -hmm and be able to put out all the matters that are contained yes. in a 400-page yes. report. Yes. That's not going to happen. Yes. So whatever. So you highlight what you think are important. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Exactly. And, and he believed this and, was and, important. And, and, and workers' money, yes. the protection of workers' money, Randy Abu, mm -hmm. is important by any measure or standard. I agree with you. Absolutely. Mm. So if he holds a press conference mm. and he chooses in the 400-page report mm -hmm. to highlight those aspects of the report mm. that bring to the fore mm. that we have a certain culture that has the tendency to erode the gains of workers in our country, mm. I think that it is germane to the matter. Okay. All right. And if I may, well, he says in, a, in a minute. Sure. So we he can says run route, uh, uh, run route. I'm not sure exactly what, where that comes from. You see, Randy, I agree with him that there is consensus about the deleterious effect of corruption on the fortunes of any nation, especially for African countries who are already disadvantaged because of our history and antecedents and what have you. But you see, that consensus does not cl uh, create room for what, in my view, constitutes irresponsible behavior 
on the part of leading government officials. Andy, it is wrong for any corporate entity to do what the Senate leadership did two days ago. When you conduct an audit and supposedly adverse findings are made, you refer it to the appropriate agency that is clothed with authority to take action on it. When you come out and speak in a way that seeks to criminalize your predecessors, especially when they've not had input into the so-called audit on which you base your claims, it is wrong. And we as citizens reserve the right to criticize that kind of conduct. Minister, please, you are running a government, not a brass band. And you are expected to conform to basic standards. If you are unable to conform to that, then your, your suitability for public office can be questioned. Mr. Ernest Thompson and all those who have held public office do not lose their rights simply because the government they served in left power or that a new set of people have come into power. Their rights must be respected. So you cannot go out there, make claims about them, refuse to take their input or fail to take their input, and turn around to accuse them in the public domain. The only place where you test the veracity of your claims is a law court. The decision to go there is made by a certain official who is paid from the taxpayer's man. He, she is called the attorney general. Lately, you've added a special prosecutor. They are the ones who make those decisions. It, is not, it does not lie in the mouth of Stika or the respected Dr. Adekufo or anybody else to make that pronouncement. What you did against Ernest Thompson was prejudicial. And I'm saying that from where I sit, I see that it was a deliberate effort to divert attention from <coughs> cases of corruption. Why you speak about rot and the need to expose it? Why are you dead silent on the rot at Metro Mass? Why are you not talking? Why have you not held a press conference to put out the details of the corruption that ensued in the Commonwealth? But the board has. Where, the Randy, board please, has. Randy, please. Hmm. Randy, please. Please. Why has there not been a daily briefing or any briefing at all on the extent of rot where government officials were engaged in visa fraud at Alle the Commonwealth Games? Allegedly. allegedly yeah. I, 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 I take back uh, mm. that word. Mm. Allegedly engaged in visa fraud. Why don't you do a daily briefing on it? Why has nobody held a briefing on where things are with the cash for seed scandal? The, 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 the rot or alleged rot at bust on two separate occasions. Why has there not been a briefing on that matter? Why has nobody briefed us on the outcome of the theft that took place with premix in this country? Where 22 million Ghana cities of the taxpayers money went into people's pockets because somebody decided that it had to happen. So I'm saying that if you want to give your members the benefit of the doubt and complete the processes in a manner that respects their rights, you must extend the same to everybody else that is involved. I also see that what you seek to do is to criminalize a political organization for partisan benefits. Because it turns out most often that after you've gone out to make all the noise and accuse people, when push comes to show that you are tested, your claims fall flat. I mentioned the case of Dr. Opuni. It was the Cocoa Board chairman and his assigns at Cocoa Board, who publicly stated that he had withdrawn $400 million, something that everybody knows cannot happen in this jurisdiction. Yet they put it out. Meanwhile, when you took the man to court, that charge has no place in your 27 charges. Meanwhile, you've done damage, substantial damage at that, to the man by making him look like somebody who was out there to deprive this country of some substantial resources. That kind of governance is poor. And if people seek to criticize you on that, you must acknowledge it and perhaps amend it. Dr. Adukufo did not have any business doing what he did. All he should have done after receiving the audit was to acknowledge receipt of it and indicate that it would be handed over to an appropriate agency to deal with. What he sought to do was to throw in something to divert attention from all the things that were happening under your in And when we vote for you, you see, let, 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 let me make this point. When we vote for you, just, round up for me, just so. like we were required to do, you are supposed to behave in ways that meet the expectations of the electorate. The electorate did not elect you to only come and give vent to frivolous allegations, allegations that are unproven, and make others look bad. If you feel strongly that corruption is a problem, or there's any basis to suspect that wrongdoing has uh, gone on, adopt a systems and processes approach. Give everybody the same benefit of the doubt that you give to Alfred Obin Boateng, or the fisheries minister, or the finance minister, or the trade minister, or everybody else who has been involved in some alleged acts of corruption. Let there be equity. Let charity begin at home. There must be an end to this media persecution. And that when people come to serve in public office, it does not make them criminals. Don't reinforce that perception 
with behavior that is underhand. All right. It is not proper. Okay. Felix, Felix, yes. Felix, Felix. I agree with you, okay, on the fundamental point that criminalizing people in the public space is not correct, to put it mildly. But there's a fundamental difference, Felix, between mere allegation and allegations that have been investigated, no matter if you want the defects of that investigation or if you want the defects of that audit. Right now, you are pointing out the defects of the audit report. That too will be a subject of dispute in the court of law. If the thing eventually goes to court, I'm sure that the lawyers are competent enough to point out that perhaps the fact that somebody was not um, told um, to answer to those charges makes the report defective or whatever. But uh, Felix, it is also the case that it is the word of N.S. Thompson and the people who have been mentioned versus the word of the, of the audit report, or even, if you want, the Senate chairman. It is not for you and I. You, 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 you choose to believe everything that N.S. Thompson and his people have said. I would believe what the chairman and his people have said. But what, what I say here and what Felix says here, Randy, is immaterial. It, it doesn't have any material effect on what will be determined in a court of law. So, Felix, we can't hold press conferences um, on matters that have been referred to investigative so authorities. So we, same, you can't do that. So, according the same standard to N.S. Thompson and everybody else. You understand the point I'm making? If what you say and what I say at best amounts to speculation, then yes. let us leave those who are close to the authority to do their job. So, yesterday, when the Attorney General came out, and said that, contrary to what Mr. Sorry, Dr. Adukufo has said, and as Thompson and the others had not been charged, it creates significant embarrassment for people like his, people like him and those at Smith. Well, you see, the impression that went out there, the moment he stated that Yoko had invited Mr. Thompson, was that arrested? Arrested Mr. Thompson was that suddenly he had become the subject of a criminal investigation and a criminal process. Meanwhile, it was not the case. He has loved ones. He has a distinguished record of service to this country, such that until those who are accusing him have conclusively proven the allegations in a court of law, he remains an innocent man. So please, I, I understand, and I've been in your position before, I understand that sometimes government is hot. But the way to convey the public, <laughs> oh yes, right, it's true. Oh, I will no, I beg your pardon, nothing no, to see, do right, with you see, you see, I've been in your position. Sometimes government becomes hot. No. Why? Uh, your your modes of I operation know, are no, not my modes of operation. No problem, no problem. But, <laughs> but a basic, but a, bit, a fundamental mm. principle underpins our work. The point is that if allegations of corruption are made against your officials, the only way you can convince the public that it is not true, or that even if it is true, you are dealing with it, would be how you approach the issue, and not any reference to any past misconduct or misbehavior on the part of any other government official who may have served in some capacity. That, for me, is the crux of this matter. All that you have sought to do, and I regret to have to be blunt with you, all that you have sought to do since you came to power was to criminalize those who you succeeded in order to justify claims that you made in opposition and also carry favor with the electorate. That is why we are having this discussion. Otherwise, it is not an issue at all. If you or myself are accused of wrongdoing and we are taken through due process, it will not be an issue. Everybody accepts that once you come into public office, uh, resources are entrusted to you. You must account for it, even if it takes 100 years for Absolutely. that accounting process to conclude. Absolutely. But in, the process, in, in that process, let us not destroy people's images and reputations uh, simply because uh, uh, we have the right and, of and power to I'll, I'll forward this to you later on, just for a reading pleasure. <coughs> Kweku Obin, a viewer, has sent me something. He says, chronology of fake snit news. And then he starts. He says, one, OBS software was bought for $72 million. Mm -hmm. Fake, it is not really only a single software, but a suite made up of 14 modules. And the software component costs less than $10 million for all the 14 models. He says, two, OBM, OBS system not working. Fake, Joy FM independent investigation proved it's working and still being used. Story now changing to it's partially working. Three, four staff were arrested and charged for financial loss. Fake, nobody was ever arrested, nobody has been charged. Attorney General has even confirmed it. Four, 
public told over a year ago that PwC has been appointed by SNE to do only a baseline audit. Fake. PwC report now contains more than that. Yet key individuals involved and vendors were not even given a hearing by the auditors. After SNE paying so much money for the PwC report, the main recommendation in the report is that SNE should rather conduct investigation of the issues raised in the report and seek legal advice on how to deal with the vendors. More waste of public funds. Why all these fake news? And this is the last fake news. The 147 million US dollars mentioned in the PwC is for all IT projects from 2010 to 2016 and not for ODS. So a lot here's of that chronology. And it, I'll it, send it Randy, to you. it cuts to some of the allegations that were made in the immediate aftermath of our exit from power were mind boggling. We knew that they were not true. And yet they were, and Randy Perez, let me also capture you in the media small. Mm. I think that a substantial part of the problem stems from the way that you guys operate. Mm. When information breaks out, rather than going behind the news and finding out whether there's even substance in the allegation or not, they just throw it out there. But some do. Uh, Randy. Some do. You uh, can't have of a course, perfect course, system. Granted. Randy, there are those who even, do, who even interrogate the, the issues. Even the of uh, Dr. Adukufo's statements, mm. if the media was minded to do a thorough job, would have been avoided entirely. Because when he says the man has been arrested by Yoko, who got in touch with Yoko? Or even the man's yeah, lawyer? Yeah, but first, the first thing is that it's a press conference. Some were reporting live. The man makes the statement. Even then, you put in the so, necessary caveats. So you can you can uh -huh. you can report what he said with the necessary caveats. No, you can, why you've not confirmed. You can it. report what he said, uh -huh. and then if you decide to do further checks, you can do so. Exactly. For example, if the honourable minister of information uh -huh. is holding a press conference, uh -huh. what he puts out, uh -huh. I can report that. Great. What he puts out, Great. and then subsequently, uh -huh. I can decide to then do. Um, um, a double check uh -huh. or further checks yes. or try and substantiate uh -huh. what he has he has said Great. you know so so they are mutually inclusive Marani. it won't be wrong for anybody to report what the minister said and if it turns out that what the minister or anybody said was not true Marani, you don't the fault time. the person who By put the, the report Marani, out most of the time most of the time what happens is that after what we politicians see is reported that is the matter indeed the person against whom the claims would have been made would then be required to come and disprove the claims that are made. No effort is made to carry out an independent verification. Yeah, and let me cite one example. I regret to have to throw this in. Uh, Special Prosecutor, Mr. Masnabi, I listened to an interview that he had with a, a radio station yesterday. In the course of the interview, he makes sweeping allegations against the past government that there was so much corruption and that the former government, the former president, covered up corruption and that he and this government will not do that. Meanwhile, they are supposed to be an independent. He made that statement. He made that, I'm telling you, for, uh, as a matter of fact. He, he, he spoke to Umar Risanda of CTFM yesterday. We were told that his office is an independent entity. He has to be impartial by virtue of the statute that sets him up. In his own appearance before Parliament's uh, appointment uh, appointment committee. committee, he reiterated the need for him to be independent and nonpartisan. Yet he made I thought he said that was even the reason why he stopped writing. Absolutely. And yet the reporter failed to press him on those claims. He merely reported what the man had said. In this instance, you don't need a response from the other side to be able to set the record straight and correct it. He then says that because, um, in the case that Dr. Aini has brought against him, because uh, Tony Leta and Mareta Gurafi of former Attorney General are the ones representing Aini, it means that it is the past NDC government that is going to cause a court against him, and that Dr. Aini is only fronting. And he is allowed to get away with this sort of narrative. Nobody presses him to, to as it were, test the logic or even the basis of the information that he is putting out. And so you have a situation where this is reported, and then considerable time will be spent discussing it, and people against whom these claims are made are there required to. So we have a problem. This government is taking advantage of that gap in journalistic practice in this country. And it is the reason why they get away with blue matter on many, many, many occasions. This is the time that they realize that they are doing damage not only to themselves, but to innocent people. A lot of, 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 of things would have gone awry in this country. So yeah. please, Mr. Minister, it is not the place of government to divert attention when you are hot. It, the only thing that will convince the electors <laughs> about your performance Felix. is to deliver Felix. on Felix. the goods. Felix, Felix, <laughs> yes. Felix, Felix. <laughs> Merely sure, saying right, yeah. hot and all oh, that you know, yeah, hot. doesn't divert from the issue. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. We tell you, remind you every day mm -hmm. that right now we have a proud record hey. 
one year, four months of record that will trump really? your eight years of governance. Let's begin sector by sector. Okay. Yeah. Finance, which is basically yeah, let's, let's, yes, the finance. fundamentals of, yes, of, of our economy. Mm -hmm. All the fundamentals that we inherited were completely dislocated. We have put them back on track. Which ones? Specific? Which ones? What was the inflation rate when you left? What were, were, well, were interest rates? What was GDP, debt to GDP ratio? What was, what was economic growth at the time? What is the economic growth today? So on, on all of those, no, no, those fundamentals, no. Which well, we trump I, I would, you. I would, I would, and in that same one year, four months, Minister, we've done it. all of the things. I, I, I Look, uh -huh. um, investment, uh -huh. even investment in people, uh -huh. even investment in people, uh -huh. 2016 figures, 2017, uh -huh. 2018 figures. Uh -huh. We have invested more in the people of this country which, than you ever did. You, you, you've not. I, I follow you. You have not. We have. Well, let me give you. I mean, I, we've I do expand, we, oh. we've, we've doubled capitation grants, expanded <laughs> the school feeding program, expanded from, leave, from where invested to where? more in social from services. Where where? We've done free SHS, from where restored where? nurses training allowance, restored oh. teachers training allowances. Mr. Blisa, I beg you. Oh, okay. Let's track back. Re reduce debt to GDP I ratio. We've done no, Mr. all Mr. of Mr. those Mr. things in that. one year. Mr. Mr. Let's track back a bit. You see, you are dealing with figures. I beg your pardon. Yes. That go trade that you speak about. Yes. With the greatest respect to you. Yes. Your finance minister and everybody else. Yes. Your government knew next to nothing about it. Look, on the second of November, twenty sixteen, President Mahama. Yes. He inaugurated the Accra Digital Center. Mm -hmm. In his speech, he said that this economy will grow by eight percent in twenty seventeen. President Mahama could not have divided into the future at that time. He was speaking on the basis of work that had been done. And objective additions that we're going to come on board to swell up our GDP. And you think I that in the 2017 that we came, no, no. we let didn't me, do me, any macro no, fundamental no, macroeconomic no. thing all you needed that to pushed do, up see, All you needed to do was actually to do nothing and allow the processes that were in place to continue. That, that all your production, be the case. it is true. Then, I beg your pardon. All your production case. from the ten fields, yes. Sankofa fields, yes, is what accounts for eight percent growth, and that was what President Mama was alluding to. That is part of it. It is not part when of you, it. When, when, no, you, when no, you left no, power, when no, you left no, power, no. industry growth was negative. And I'm saying that that... And we I'm pushed you, industry no, growth no. to 17.7% from negative Mr. to 17. Mr. Mr. Disaggregate, industry. disaggregate the industry growth. You will find that they add oil and gas production to industry. The oil and gas industry alone grew by 80.4% last year because of the 10 and Sankofa fields. The government statistician put out that information only last week. So when I say that you knew next to nothing about it, that's what I mean. Don't just quote the figure. You have not done anything in the real sector to move you, industry you, forward. You, you had Sankofa, you had Tank, because you no, had car power, you had all on, those no, things. Yet no, industries were on, shutting down, no, workers Mr. were Minister, being asked Minister, to go home Minister, Minister, because there been was asked, no power. Workers are being to, asked to, to go home as I speak to you. Where, on on no, what basis? When two banks collapse, UT Bank, Capital Bank, 600 workers yes. have gone home. I beg your pardon. Oh, I beg your pardon. I told you in point. 2016 me, so that the way in no, which you were no, managing no, the, no, the, the banking pardon. sector, Dr. Bam, eight banks us, were about minister, to collapse. Minister, he said that. Minister, in I, was, I was fact checking the information that you put out. Yes. Inflation. Yes. It moved from 19% to 15% in 2016. Read your finance minister's budget of 2017. He acknowledged the downward trajectory of inflation. T bill rates moved from 24% to 16%. Your finance minister acknowledged that. You speak about investment. As I speak to you, the ranking, ease of doing business index. We have slipped 13 places. In 2016, we moved up 12 places. There's another one that a financial institution in South Africa does. They say best place to invest in West Africa. Mm -hmm. When President Mama was president, we were fourth. No, we were third. We slipped to fourth. And then we've slipped to fifth in the space that you've been in power check the investment figures every single year we have been in power it has gone so up. in and, in, and uh, I, in I beg your pardon no you speak in the about indices, investing no in you the speak indices, about investing in people about let me, you, about let me challenge listen, that about you let, let me land okay you let me challenge your claim about investing in people yes i beg you mr minister yes the capitation grants yes the school fee that you speak of yes hmm? yes when we came to power yes. in 2008 mm -hmm. or better still 2009 mm -hmm. january mm -hmm. Only 9%, 9% of basic school children were fed. That was around 400,000 children. Mm -hmm. By the time we left office, it had gone to 32%. I want you to give me the percentage of expansion and the actual figures today. National Health Insurance Scheme, 
-hmm. Go and check the figures mm -hmm. in terms of utilization. That is how many times people go to the hospital with the cars. When we left power, it was 30 million. When we came to power in 2008, it was 8 million. Enrollment. That's one of the things you see. And the 30 million oh, people were yes. able to utilize the cards? Yes, they utilized In 2016, they, I beg your pardon. They used institutions today, were not look, even accepting the Even today, they, they don't even, they are not able to assess the cards because it is not available. They don't get the cards to begin with. That's then right. you speak about investing in people in education. Yes. You bandy about a figure of 90,000 as the increase in enrollment. Yes. And say... But that's obvious. Oh, that's Mr. not bandying. Oh, um, no, no. I'm telling you, Mr. Uh, Minister, yeah. Mr. Information Minister, yeah. I'm sure you have access to information. Exactly. There is a report. Mm -hmm. It is called the Education Sector Performance Report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the past, they used to print it in, in huge volumes. But now, because of technology, it's available on the website of the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Education. Check increase in enrollment between 2010-2011 and 2011-2012. It's increased by 89,000, mm -hmm. which is just 1,000 short. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you do an average calculation, you will find that in the last 10 years, on the average, enrollment has gone up by 50%. Mm -hmm. You speak about investments. And it has gone up oh, I beg your pardon. You speak about investments in health. Yeah. What investments are you talking about? We spent close to $2 billion providing the place where, when people fall sick, they will go and seek health care. One of them is the Legon Hospital, which for reasons best known to your government, you've kept under lock and key. Only last week, your Minister of Health was on earth claiming that there were no generators, and that is why the hospital cannot be open. Only for Joy News to uncover that two huge generators sit on, the, on, the, on that uh, particular facility. And, say, and certainly, if it has not been open, it cannot be due to these generators massive. So why? The transport sector. This morning, I randy read a news item about how Terminal 3 will become uh, what they call like it. Like Delhi's Terminal 3. W what does the government know about Terminal 3? The money for it, $267 million, was found. The project started. And all that your government needed to do was actually to do nothing and allow the process to continue. Only yesterday, I got pictures of the whole airport, which has been completed. We did work on the Tamale airport. We did work on the Kumasi airport. Show me what work you've done in the aviation sector. In the energy sector, um, again, President Mama, when he was solving Dumso, said that we will become an exporter of electricity by 2017 based on the work that he had done. Last week, or is it this week, your Minister of Energy is on record to have said, no, is a... Greek um, yes. He is saying that, yes, you've started exporting, uh, what do you call it, Power. electricity. So tell me what additions you've made to generation that enables us to have extra generation capacity to export. You used to claim that when you came in, you paid off the debt you owe to ga Nigeria gas. That is not accurate. Only last week, they made that we owe them $140 million. So we can go for a sector by sector analysis. But when you see that in one and a half years, you've done more that we did in eight years. With the greater respect to you, that cannot be accurate. The facts don't speak to it. It is true that one and a half years is not sufficient time to assess you fully. That is, even if we were to consider the very timelines that you yourselves have given should be overlooked because you gave timelines. Your president is on record. We've never given oh, time. I beg your pardon. Our oh, no problem, no problem. has never said that Minister. 100 days Randy, will do again, this like your Google this. President he said it. in 2016 that he will transform Ghana in 18 months. That <laughs> elapses. <laughs> yes, he said it. He, that elapses <laughs> in June. Again, with regards to one district, one factory, Mr. Minister, no. I can pull for you right now about eight different timelines that the president, the trade minister, Mr. Omkalinzi, Madame Ohini Konedu, mm -hmm. and other have given. You've put that on Absolutely. your Absolutely. So why you say you've not given timelines? But those timelines. Exactly what do you mean? Those, you, 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 you put it out on your yes. Facebook wall. Yes. Claiming that everything that these people had said uh -huh. contradicted each other. And that it, or, it did not or, materialize. Or one another. It's not true. Oh, It's how? not true that there were any contradictions no, in Mr. all Mr. of those no. things. I had cause Mr. to Mr. take Mr. that Facebook Mr. Mr. Uh, when well, I was on Asempa. That and that I <laughs> proved to you that, that you they, are, they are not Mr. contradictions. No, no, they are no. Not. My, no. None of them. Indeed, my post never referred to contradictions. What do, what they do are in fact contradictions, but I didn't refer to I referred to the <laughs> timelines that you have told to meet. The president, in August of 2017, um, at Ekonfi, and I was at Ekonfi only two days ago, there's nothing on that land. He said that he was cutting salt. And you didn't see the pineapple. Oh, Randy, Randy, they promised the a factory, not a pineapple plantation. It will not be the first time that pineapple has been planted in Ghana. That whole enclave, they plant all manner of things. Pineapple no, they've said water that Randy, they do not want the, 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 the commander situation mm -hmm. where you finish the factory. Randy, but that is you don't have the... Randy, you don't have flawed the, argument. You don't you have the... Commander, the, Randy, the uh, it is a flawed argument. You don't have the, the, the raw material. The raw material. Randy, it's a flawed so argument. 
they are sorting out the raw material. Right. So by the time the Pineapple. factory is con it, by the time the factory is is completed, it will have the raw material. Right. Pineapple away. it takes what three or four months to ripen. So that three or four months has elapsed. Where is the factory? The commander sugar factory with maintenance can last a hundred years. In that hundred years, pineapple can be grown two hundred times because it takes six. Sorry, sugar cane can be grown two hundred times. It takes um, six months to cultivate sugar cane from planting to harvesting. So they can plant sugar cane all they want to officialize it. They don't want to do it. But the point I was making is that the president gave a specific timeline in the Kufi that by the end of November, 51 of those factories would have started. Mr. Minister, not a single factory started. Madam Ohini Konedu, if you Google it today, technology, in June 2016, said that she had the money she needed. Not 2016. Oh, sorry, 2017, I beg your pardon, yes. In June 2017 said that she had the money she needed. And so 10 of those factories would take place in June. Madam Hawa Kumsin, when you come to the one district, sorry, IPEP, um, one million per constituency, she is on record that, and she spoke in June, she says August, first week of August, the disbursements will start. So when I speak of timelines, I'm speaking on the basis of what your own officials have said. You fail to acknowledge that the same Madam Gifty or Hine Kunedu mm -hmm. has subsequently given reasons why the 51 didn't materialize. And I said that because of that, she won't give timelines. But, Radi, but, but government Radi, was now matter? dealing with, local government was now dealing with local banks. Radi, but that and was and the matter. thankfully, all the local banks have set up units or desks Radi, for the one Radi, that was the matter. So where were, were the local banks in the scheme of things when the president was making that promise? In any event, were we the ones who forced Vice President Baumia to tell us that he had gone to China to secure $19 billion? And part of that was $2 billion coming from the China uh, Development Bank also to finance the one day sweeping factory. We are not the ones who give those timelines and assurances. So when did... And Dr. Mustafa Hamid. But I, I haven't formally congratulated him for... It's a very significant achievement. Oh, yes. Congratulations for... Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I oh, mean, yes. it's an inspiration I mean, to all of us that we can combine... I mean, to do that yes. with all Especially the pressure. Especially in a field that is not too... For want of a better expression, common. Absolutely. It's a very encouraging your, your thesis, <coughs> your thesis had to do with some Islamic practice, right? Islam and gender in Dagbo. Oh, okay. wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. So how, so how do you feel like now when you hear all those, uh, I see some, some, so <laughs> a little confusion. Sometimes when uh, uh, things are attributed to you, sometimes they write, um, uh, Mustafa Hamid, PhD. PhD. Then there are times that they write Dr. Mustafa Hamid. You still have not settled on how you want no, to. No, no, no. I write my name Mustafa Abdul Hamid, PhD. PhD. That's okay. how I write So that's, that's how you sign statements. That's how actually it should when be. When I put out yeah. public statements, yeah. I that's write PhD. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Just to say that this is a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a proper one. It's not <laughs> The proper one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I mean, the truth is, when I, you know, when I was younger growing up, I used to look at the brand of my Exactly. Uh -huh. This one is permanent head damage. <laughs> anyway, yeah. let's move on to the Herald. This is House, and I'm talking about the aftermath to the double salary thing. This is House of Dishonorable Men, majority leader and others trapped in 500,000 Ghana City security cash shame. And the Daily Post says, oh, you are speaker, two colleagues, double rent. And uh, the story uh, by the Herald is that uh, continues nosing in and around Parliament has revealed uh, naked dishonest behavior of, uh, says, the majority leader in a list of MPs who are currently serving as ministers in the government of Nana Kufado. This paper's unimpeachable sources in the accounts department of Parliament revealed that the now Minister for Parliamentary Affairs while leading the minority caucus between 2013 to 2016, although had a 24-hour police protection in his house, as well as bodyguards, wherever he went, collected a sum of money made available to MPs to hire preferred security personnel of their choice. Also in the web are the then Deputy Minority Leader and now Minister of Defense, Dominic Mitu, the Minority Chief Whip Dan Buche, now Minister uh, for Regional Reorganization and Development, then First Deputy Minority Chief Whip, Arena Toshina, Administrator of District Assembly Common Fund, and the second Deputy Majority Chief Whip and now Minister for Employment and Labor Ignatius Bafuwa. They pocketed a total of 500,000 Ghana cities behind closed doors, although I stopped opposition 
leaders in the legislative arm of government, the House have provided police protection. That's excluded from the 100,000 each MP took home at the time to arrange for his or her personal security. The revelations show that both the MPP and NDC uh, have not been truthful and prudent with the resources of this country. And the paper's information is that despite huge protests from the Accounts Department of Parliament, uh, the Honorable Chairman Sabonso insisted he be paid. He and the others were given the security money, uh, paper says, to chop while keeping the police as their bodyguards in their homes and uh, cars. And uh, the paper has gone on to talk about um, um, others as well, uh, say that uh, details are that a good number of the 70 MPs who double as ministers are secretly enjoying packages that come with being legislators and at the same time dishonestly enjoying the ones from the executive when in actual fact they're entitled to only one. These MPs, the paper is informed, have each pocketed 20% of their salaries as allowances for their accommodation and shortly thereafter moved into state bungalows as ministers in the Kupado government. They each collected a whopping 90,000 cities in March 2017 from the coffers of parliament. They were expected to honorably return the 90,000 cities rent allowance to parliament after becoming ministers, but this was not done. And they have a list of all of them. And they say that um, it brings to question the integrity of these appointees, as well as the dishonesty on the part of this government, which is accusing some former ministers of the Eswa Mahama government of receiving double salaries. The police CID has been mandated to charge and probe the ex-ministers. Some of them have been granted bail and in the case they in the case they believe is a political witch hunt. Now the Daily Post says that um, uh, <coughs> the Speaker of Parliament, right Honorable Aaron Michael Quay, has been caught in the alleged stealing saga that has rocked Parliament with some MPs allegedly collecting double salaries. Credible information available to the Daily Post indicates that he too has collected double rent. The Speaker received a whopping sum of 105,000 CD 105,630 CD 72 pesos, and they take it to the old currency, say 1.05 billion. As rent allowance for two years, despite the fact that he lives in a state mansion at Cantonments in Accra, owned by the state, the amount was calculated by taking 20% of his monthly salary, which is 23,920 cities, and multiplying it by 24 months. According to information gathered by the newspaper writer, Honorable Michael Quay's action is contrary to that of his predecessor. Dua Jao, who, while in office, immediately returned his rent allowance paid into his account because he was living in a facility provided by the state. And they also recall the issue of the former ministers who are accused of taking double salary. So, Honorable, yeah. this is where we are. It appears that the system we are running is en engendering these double, double, double things. <coughs> Again, Rani, um I do not want to um, engage in, let's use the term we've been using all morning here, prejudicial mm. statements right. and, and, and comments. When the story about former ministers taking double salary was put out in the, in the public space, um, my very good friend, um, the Honorable Okujeto Ablakwa, right you know, did a strong rebuttal. Even said that the police had called about 18 of them and apologized to them for including their name, their names in a matter that they were not involved in. Subsequently, the police denied that they did that and only said that investigations are ongoing and everybody will be called at the appropriate time. Subsequently, um, these papers and of course it's important to note that this is daily post and herald yes and everybody knows the orientation of daily post and herald mm -hmm. so i can conclude that this is an attempt to equalize and quite frankly politicians do equalizations all of the time mm -hmm. and so they are seeking to say that current members of parliament who are also ministers have fallen foul of the law by collecting rent allowance from parliament and living in government bungalows if that is the case it is true i raised that, that issue wrong. here on monday i raised it yes here on no monday. but if it yeah. is true it is wrong okay hmm. however i have seen some of the the names quite frankly i don't know where many of the ministers live <laughs> but i saw one my own deputy nanama dukia 
they are included her name put her pictures on the front pages of the the queer lives in her own house and i'm sure you know that yes i do exactly she but lives in her, my neighborhood exactly okay. so she, she she's built her own house and yes. she lives in it yes. and she's been living in it before mpp came to yes. power. correct but they put out her name yes. and saying that she's also a minister of state yes. and she's living in a government yes. bungalow and she's taking yes. an allowance yes so that makes me incapable of affirming the case I even for the saw, rest of the I even world. saw something she wrote. Yes. I think on Facebook. Uh -huh. She put out a Facebook but you see, saying that you see, it's not true. Because you see, she lives okay, in so house. honorable, please. Yes. When you go back to the office, yes. ask her to go and check her salary. Yes. To find out yes. whether she has not been paid 20% of her basic salary as rent allowance from the time she started earning a salary. You know? No, if she's been paid, uh, she's been paid rent allowance. It is correct because if you live in your own. No, you don't. You don't get the point I'm making. Yeah. She's an MP and she's a minister. The yeah. point is that yeah. they've collected rent allowance from Parliament, and for the seventy of them who are also ministers or deputy ministers, yeah, they are either collecting rent allowance from the executive, or are living in state bungalows. So. The point is that both the legislature and the executive are paying them um, rent allowance. So they've taken rent allowance from parliament, and then some of them are living in state bungalows. Those who are not living in state bungalows are getting 20% of their basic as rent allowance. That is the allegation. But I don't, I don't think that that allegation is correct. Okay. Because, um, well, I would check the details or if you want the breakdown of the salaries that we receive because i don't live in a government bungalow mm. okay but i will check and see whether in lieu of that you are being paid 20 percent of your basic as rent allowance it is when you go to the consolidated when you when you go to you go now go and check no, I think there's a, there's a, because there's, I, it must be corrected um, yes. you live in a government bungalow i don't you don't live in a bungalow. yes so you are entitled to rent allowance what will normally happen is that there's an account called the Chief of Staff's Sundays account. Mm -hmm. So the Chief of Staff will give you a check. It takes some time to process. So they will give you a check, which is 20% of your basic salary. For me every to, month. To, live, to be able to live. For, so that you rent. No, house. once, they once the that, state has not once, provided once you, not you, or you haven't taken, uh -huh. you are entitled. So it will come at some point. You are entitled yes. to 20% of your basic salary as rent allowance. But, but you are, are entitled. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But in the so. case of Dukia and the rest of them who are in parliament, mm -hmm. are you following me? Mm -hmm. I'm saying I know Dokuya, mm. so that's why I'm speaking using Dokuya as an yes, example. Yes. She lives in her own house. Yeah. So the allowance that she's collected from parliament is legitimate. Yes, yes. It, yes. Is. it is. It is. Exactly. <coughs> it is. So why are we having no. this discussion? It is. Has she, you see, Randy, the question is this. Yes. Uh, you know for a fact yes. that there are some ministers of state who are MPs who live in government bungalows, right? Maybe. I don't know. Uh -huh. quite that is where I don't the know problem. Like I said, colleagues. what what they will do is that they will give you a check for you to clear as your. They, they give it quarterly or say, uh, what do you call it by by year or something like that. So that will happen in the course of time. But if you are a minister of state and you happen to be an MP, you no know, parliament assumes that once you are an MP, especially for those who come from uh, external regions, exactly. uh, you don't live in Accra, so they need to give you something to help you settle. So they give they give them eighty four thousand. I'm aware that that money has been paid to all MPs. All 275 oh, of course, that's one. All uh -huh. 275 but those of them MPs. who are yes. ministers, who all are 275 yes. are not entitled to that. Because they they shouldn't be. They should be. Yeah, uh -huh. So all that's what the publication the, is about. The, 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 the but is it true? Yes, it is true that it is true. Okay, honorable minister, just take this. It is true that they have been paid. Honorable minister, just take this. It is true that they have been paid. No, hold on, hold on. It is true that they live in government banks. Hold on, honorable minister. But every every one of the 275 MPs has received their rent allowance from parliament without a doubt they have all received yes now 70 of these 275 mm -hmm. are ministers or deputy ministers yes okay. some of these 70 mm -hmm. live bangalows. in government bungalows that is a matter of fact you know that for a fact 
Well, I don't know. Quite so you frankly. mean no government official lives in a bungalow? No, they do. I'm sure ah, they so do. Yes. Yeah, so so, they do. so they for every minister, <laughs> for every minister or deputy then minister, then let's be sure. Yes. yes. For every minister yes, or deputy minister. For all of us not to accuse people. Oh, no. For, for no. every minister uh -huh. or deputy of minister. Who are saying that every? Because Look. all my deputies, yes. all of them, yes. I know there are three. Uh -huh. yes. They all live in their houses. Two of them uh -huh. in Tema, yes. and then one no, behind the trade fair. So that's why I'm finding it difficult to believe that this is a widespread phenomenon. Honourable minister, there are some of them who may well have their own houses and live there but they will still take the government bungalow so that from time to time they can operate from there it happens also so what you know they do, none of them has fine that's what you need to do that. for sure <laughs> none just, of us just, in the of information just speak to your, lives there <laughs> and lives in a just speak to your colleague the minister for western houses yes. they have a department that keeps track of it so he'll give I you a list we of, would ask them for the yeah he'll, he'll give you a list of all those allocated government bungalows and then cross check it against those who are mps who have all received as a matter of fact if, if they've done, the Randy, I agree uh -huh. with you that they should return so the money. Now, one of the... That's one. Well, eh? I agree it's with you. Uh, should they return the money or should the CID charge them for stealing? <laughs> but that <laughs> is, is true. No, I think that they should <laughs> simply refund it. Huh? And that's what I believe they should do. Because sometimes they may even not be aware of the... Uh, of what the they are implications attacking of... Exactly. It, it, you see, it's a function of how sloppy we've been as a country. The way that we don't determine the emoluments early enough. So some of them may genuinely not be aware. No, 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 that Felix. Uh -huh. If, if, mm -hmm. if... The practice mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. is that the CID uh -huh. would deal with these issues as criminal That's offenses. That's what I was coming to. That's what mm -hmm. I was coming and, to. Mm -hmm. And criminally investigate this matter <laughs> yes. with the objective of prosecuting. That's what I was coming then to. Then anybody who then has the taken the vote. The well, prosecution could we are now told that the speaker, according if, to the paper, the they yes. claim that the speaker lives, has been paid rent allowance. Lives just and around. he lives yeah. in the official... Yeah. Uh, uh, Government official government. But that's another claim by a newspaper. Yeah, I'm that's saying that's the claim. Is, but it is yes. true. As for the speaker, everybody knows that he lives in the official speaker's residence right here in Gantomex. And then he has taken this amount from the accounts. They say he's taken. Yes. So if indeed he has taken, mm -hmm. it, 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 if he allows. has. And going by your government's then the position, CID should, CID should invite him. Invite Can you him. imagine a speaker of parliament invited to the CID because of a matter like this? I mean, sometimes uh, we should be fair to ourselves as a people. Uh -huh. So... Go look into it. Let's let's bring that but up. Right before it goes, I, beg you. Yes. I think it's important mm. for the government's image to clarify this matter. So I would advise, suggest that you get that list from the oh, I'll find West out. I told you, yes, the West and and indicates who has what, so that the matter is laid to rest. Absolutely. Otherwise, it will continue to happen. So every minister or deputy yeah. minister mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. who lives in a government bungalow yes. and, and is a member of parliament yeah. mm -hmm. must refund the It's a thousand. subject for criminal investigations by the CID. Yes, by going by the MPP's uh, it's not MPP. position. Going oh, by what? the CID. <laughs> oh, <laughs> minister. What so you think that Madam Tiwa sat in the office and simply yes. decided that she was yes, going to yes, invite Yes, yes, yes. That's the oh, evidence yes. we have. Yes. Oh, but, but that's the evidence, evidence have. you have that that's oh. the MPP reported. Madam Tiwa. That's the evidence you have. Well, unless you have also, <laughs> unless you have also planted a third, <laughs> a third <laughs> cloth. Is she clothed with the power to investigate?